Hey everyone, welcome back. Now today, we're still on our rehousing trick. We gotta got a lot more spiders rehoused. Now today, we're gonna work on this little beauty right here. Now this little enclosure is perfectly suited to this animal, probably for its entire life. But at one of the recent expos, I picked up an enclosure that was a little bit more unique, a little bit more appropriate for this incredible girl. So let's get to it. <laughs> All right, so let's get to it. So the animal in question today is Latrodectus hesperus, more commonly known as the Western Black Widow. Now, as I mentioned, it's not very easy to see her. She generally spends all of her time on the lid. The lids on this little cute little enclosure is a slide out lid with some different magnets. It works really, really well. Now these enclosures are fairly local to me. There's a gentleman uh, that has a business called uh, Primal Fear Tarantulas, and he sells all these different enclosures, all sorts of different sizes and so forth. Now, I've bought a few other ones that were slightly larger that uh, I, I wasn't overly pleased with just in regards to my applications, but uh, these little tiny ones, these ones are awesome. And I also bought a much larger enclosure at the same expo, which you guys will see down the road for a future video, and it's awesome as well. Now, the one I got for this particular one is going to be a lot more appropriate. It is this one. <laughs> and the neat thing about this one is it actually comes with two different types of covers, depending on your choices. So it's all magnets. So it comes with a clear cover, so you'd have ventilation all the way around. And then it gives you really, really good views into the enclosure. Or if it's an animal that's, you know, very, very arid and needs a, a fair bit more ventilation, you also have this one here, which also gives a lot more. I guess, you know, it seems almost as if this enclosure was, was themed specifically for this animal. But I think I enjoy the other one, the clear one, better because primarily we'll be doing it for viewing for, uh, for video for you guys. So I think this is the one we're going to use. So let's get started. This is a species that is... Is, is fairly, now widows are available or dispersed, different widow spiders are dispersed all over the world. So as you can see by the shirt I was wearing, the widow spiders, Latrodectus family, is pretty diverse. Right there in the center coming up from the bottom is Hesperus, or Hesperus, which is the one that we were just discussing, with that classic hourglass shape, but which we really couldn't get much of a good image of, but I'm sure I have some better pictures of her from before. You can see they're pretty incredibly diverse. So it's just a little tiny bit of my proprietary substrate mix. It's not a species that's going to dig whatsoever, so it's just really just for cosmetic purposes and to retain a, a bit of moisture. I was thinking we'll cover the base with a little piece of moss. I'll give me a nice little humidity sink as well. And then we got to try and find some sort of an appropriate branch of some sort. I want it to fit, obviously, and I should have done this while it was vertical. I'll give you an idea. I'm kind of looking at I want to have this kind of cluster somewhere near the top where the animal will spend most of its time. So I'm going to cut this branch here. I'm going to use some pruning shears. And then next step is kind of figure out where this is all going to go. And then we're going to prune those things accordingly. I think I like that. Maybe a, some fallen leaves. As it's a species from North America, it would see these type of leaves. These ones happen to be uh, oak leaves, just slightly smaller. I pick the gigantic ones, just more for scale in the enclosure. And overall, I kind of like that. Give it just a little spray down. Now the species comes from a fairly diverse type of habitats, but generally if you were to look for them in the wild, you often find them in kind of a farm and scrub lands and stuff like that. So they don't really require a fair bit of humidity. So easy, easy to keep. Now rehousing this type of spider or encountering this spider in the wild, this is the most venomous spider we have in North America. 
It is what, without question an animal that deserves our respect because an adult female, now granted only females of the widow spiders uh, can, can uh, give you a venomous bite. The males don't have it, but the females do. And the venom is a neurotoxic venom, so it'll affect your, it potentially can have the ability to affect anything within your nervous system. It can affect your heart rate, it can affect your breathing, it can affect all sorts of things. But generally the most things that are found is uh, people will get extreme pain and back issues. There was an individual on, uh, I found uh, online that has uh, sampled, tried to get bit and got bit and, ex and portrayed in the video. And if I can find the video, I'll put a link to it to showcase everything about how he dealt with and what it was like going through by being bitten by one. But the venom quantity of this animal or the venom toxicity of this animal is 15 times higher than that of a rattlesnake. And rattlesnakes, I can tell you by first first-hand account, are not something you want to mess with either. So rehousing this animal, make sure you do it in a very safe environment. I have my catch cups, I have my brushes, I have a little stick. Because this is an animal that can be fairly quick, I'm going to just try and slowly ease her into the enclosure from here. It's going to be very, very slow, hopefully, and easy going. She's generally attached to the lid, so if I figure if we can kind of get her... Maybe we'll do this. Maybe we'll do something like this. See if we can get her onto that. Come on, little girl. She's close. Let's get some good footage of her close up. Got that beautiful classic shape. What a cool spider. Yeah, go on that stick. There you go. There we are. Let's take a closer look. And there she goes, entirely on her own. And she's going to go, as expected, right up to the top, and she'll make herself a new nest. And that is how rehousings should go. Keep calm, do it safely. And then simply just paste the, the cover on. The covers are the the covers for these are pretty well attached. There's no chance she's going to be able to open that whatsoever. And it's just held on by four neodymium magnets, two at the top and two at the bottom. But I think it looks awesome. Very suited for her. The acrylic gives you a nice crystal clear look into her. You saw a little flash there, the red. That was her hourglass shape that they're characteristically known for. Now she'll be hard at work for the next little while, rebuilding her home. Here you can see her, she's already exploring her enclosure, and she's already starting to put together her web nest. She's going to go back and forth between the branches, laying her silk strands. Now this genus, Latrodectus, contains 34 species, of which three are in North America. The southern black widow, Latrodectus mactans, the western, this one here, Hesperus, and the northern black widow, Latrodectus variolus. Now, female spiders have exceed exceptionally large venom glands, and as mentioned, their bite can be particularly harmful to any large vertebrate, pets, animals, but most importantly, humans. However, despite their notoriety, the bite of a black widow rarely causes death or produce any real serious complications outside of usually extreme pain. And the pain will often last for several days. Now one thing that is unique to this genera, maybe not because you know other species exhibit this as well, but the prevalence of sexual cannibalism is a behavior in which the female eats the male after mating. And this is what inspired the common name of widow spiders. Now, black males, widow spiders, 
tend to select their mates by determining if the female has eaten already to avoid being eaten themselves. And they are able to tell if a female has fed recently by sensing certain chemical scents within the web. Now this species, Lactrodectus hesperus, is referred to as an opportunistic cannibal because only in dire situations will it resort to cannibalism. But it also is known that they produce very, very large clutches of offspring. And Hesperus, are all, the offspring, are known to engage in sibling cannibalism. Regardless, they are fascinating spiders. Incredible spiders to, to watch and observe. As long as it's done safely and with respect. And in captivity, they can often live upwards of three years. So it makes it very, very easy to care for animals. So as always, my friends, hope you found this video enjoyable. I enjoyed making it for you. And until next time, take care.